Моля, аплодисменти за Стаси Кара! За мен е удоволствие да оставя актьорите в твоите ръце. Аплодисменти още веднъж! Мерси! Здравейте на всички! Вълнувате ли се? Е, как не? Аз вече имах удоволствието да се срещна с двамата ни специални гости отзад в бекстейджа. Ви уверявам, че наистина са страхотни. Вчера имахме един специален гост, днес са цели двама. Познаваме ги като много-много важни и интересни герои, част от семейството и поредицата на един, ще кажа, не от най-успешните сериали в последните години, а въобще в историята на киното и на телевизията, Game of Thrones или Игра на тронове, Предстои ни среща с двама от актьорите, превъплатили се в а, герои. Първо, по традиция, тъй като все пак а, даваме привилегия на дамите, ще ви представя нея. Актрисата се казва Киша Касъл Хюз. Познаваме я като Обара Сан в Игра на тронове, но много интересно е, че тя още на 13 години е номинирана за Оскар. Лично Джордж Лукас и се обажда, за да участва в поредицата между звездни войни, след което става част и от семейството на Игра на тронове. Нека си припомним част от а, това какво представлява нейната героиня, един безстрашен войн. Мама! Nim, Obara, will it be war? Prince Doran will weep for your father, but nothing else. We must avenge Oberyn ourselves. Without Doran, we have no army to march against the Lannisters. We don't need an army to start a war. Queen Cersei loves her children. And we have one of them. You may have a problem. A ship's captain who found me in Plankytown claiming he had information to sell. He told me he smuggled Jamie Lannister into Dorne. He's come for Marcella. If he gets to her before we do, we lose our only chance for revenge. You must choose Doran's way and peace, or my way and war. I'm with you, always. Nim? Obara? When I was a child, Oberyn came to take me to court. I'd never seen this man, and yet he called himself my father. My mother wept, said I was too young and a girl. Oberyn tossed his spear at my feet and said, girl or boy, we fight our battles. But the gods let us choose our weapons. My father pointed to the spear and then to my mother's tears. I made my choice long ago. А сега моля за вашите продължителни аплодисменти за актрисата Киша Касъл Хюз. Good, good. I'm really excited. Thank you all so much for coming. Did you expect you have so many fans in Bulgaria? No, but I'm really excited about it because <laughs> I really like it here. So. I'm sure they're dying to know everything about your experience on Game of Thrones. But before that, should we invite our um, gentleman as well on stage? Yeah, for sure. What do you think of him? Do you like him? Yeah, I do. <laughs> He's really great. <laughs> А сега е време да представим и кавалера, който ще ни прави компания. Един актьор, който познаваме в много ключова роля от сериала Game of Thrones. Жрец от храма на многоликия бог. Един актьор, който е играл в филми, сериали, театрални пиеси и какво ли още не, неговия талант е истински разнороден. Нека си припомним част от най-запомнящите се моменти на Том Влашиха.
You told her to kill me. Yes. But here you are. And there she is. Finally, a girl is Noah. A girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell. And I'm going home. How are you doing? I had a haircut. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. see that. It's quite a different look for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your first time in Bulgaria. Um, how does it change every time you come here? Well, it's, uh, it, it's great every time, actually. Uh, so it's my fourth time. Uh, I've done a few uh, films here, um, and I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's cool. That's very good to hear. Guys, I want to start with... Um, Obviously, Game of Thrones is a huge production with international, not only cast, but crew from everywhere, all around, around the world, including you guys. Kisha, you were born in Australia, grew up in New Zealand. Tom, you're from Germany. You still live in Germany up to this day, right? Germany, yeah. How did you come across this project, and how did you fit in um, in, in, in such a huge production? Uh, well, I was a big fan of the books. Um, I read them when I was in high school and so uh, I was more, I knew when the show was starting I was immediately, you know, really into it. Um, and so I guess I came across the project the same way, you know, like for most things as an actor, although I did, I was aware that Dawn was coming up in the show, and from my knowledge of the books, I thought that maybe I looked like I could be from Dawn if I was from anywhere. <laughs> and so I did kind of make a few phone calls and I was proactive about that. But in terms of fitting in, I mean, that's one of the great things about, you know, the show is that it shoots all over the world and there is a cast and crew from everywhere. We have um, all of the st stunt team I worked with uh, were predominantly from Bulgaria, actually, um, and they were incredible. They're, Complete a bunch of very invincible men. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I know that unlike Keisha, you didn't know much about Game of Thrones before this. I knew nothing. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, how did that change for you? <laughs> um, well, I uh, I had never heard of Game of Thrones before because I was uh, cast for season two. And season one hadn't aired at that, uh, at that point, so I had never heard of it. And uh, my agent just told me, oh, it's an American fantasy show with some dragons. And uh, I said, well, well, yeah, I'll do the audition, fine. And um, I was lucky because uh, the producers, they were thinking, because Jacken comes from Bravos, like from this remote island, they were looking for an actor with an accent. And in the initial um, casting, in the, in the description of the part, it, it said um, he has an Eastern accent. And I was like, God, what is an Eastern accent? Uh, so uh, when I did my auditioning tape, um, I tried to put on a little Russian accent. And <laughs> they actually, for some reason, gave me the part. Uh, but when, they, uh, when we met, uh, they looked at me and they said, oh, no, um, just speak the way you speak. Uh, you don't have to put on a Russian accent. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna let the audience know that there is a microphone over there to the left. So if you guys want to ask your questions towards our actors, you're welcome to do so. If uh, you cannot do it in English, I will help you with the translation. So just be brave <laughs> and ask your question. What was the most difficult part, I guess, about being Obara? She's um, fearless, she fights a lot. Did you do your own stunts? Uh, I did majority of them, uh, which I was very happy about because, you know, often when you go into a... He I hadn't done a lot of heavy stunt work, but, you know, often there are stunt doubles for a reason. Um, but the nature of the show is that so much of it is fast moving and the way that the sand snakes in particular fight because we fight the three of us as one unit it was really important that we got as much of the choreography as we could so uh, as soon as i knew i had the part i started immediately doing wushu training and a lot of you know physical conditioning um and it was really hard work you know i think for a lot of well for myself and a lot of other actors you kind of go, oh, I'd love to do my own stunts, and then you do half a day of stunt work, and it hurts. <laughs> and so it was, it was really, you know, it was, a, it was a big challenge for me, like, pushing through that. But, but you can be a warrior in your next film. Yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, she's, she's a fierce character to play for a really long time, and so it was bittersweet at the end, for sure. It was nice to put her away for a little bit. <laughs> Tom, and for you, what was, I guess, the hardest part in terms of preparation, in terms of the hair? The hair was very hard, yeah. Um, um, Growing hair can be hard. No, it actually, it, it was a really nice wig, uh, and it didn't take that long to put it on. It just like 15, 20 minutes every morning. The, the hardest part was actually um, this bathrobe that I'm wearing in uh, season five and six, because it looks quite comfortable. Uh, but the thing is, it's completely shapeless. So whenever you move, it slides all off your body. So I constantly had like three or four uh, wardrobe people uh, onto me, like rearranging me, pulling me, pushing me, doing uh, all sorts of things, but it was okay. <laughs> I can see that we have uh, a lot of people lined up for questions now, so let's begin. Hi. Hi, welcome to our country first. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, my question is, who should sit on the Iron Throne? Well, clearly me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really understand the question. I mean, it's clear, no? <laughs> no, um, my, well, um, my personal opinion, but that's that just based on, on, on my personal opinion, not on any knowledge. Um, I think that no one's going to sit on the Iron Throne. <laughs> um, <laughs> just because um, it's, it's been a symbol for war and destruction and, and everything, so I, I, I cannot really imagine anyone sitting on the Iron Throne in the end. Maybe it gets destroyed. Thank you. Keisha? Do you uh, have an I, opinion on that? I mean, I have a really similar opinion, uh, actually, is that I think that it's been, yeah, a symbol, and everyone who's kind of tried their hand in it, it hasn't worked out very well for them. So, if it is anyone, hopefully it's someone that we don't like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Can we have the next question, please? Um, hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question which is kind of odd, but... Outside of Game of Thrones, which was your favorite movie set to work on? <laughs> um, you've been on Star Wars set? Yeah, just I mean, a Star little Wars <laughs> was pretty fun. Uh, um, I mean, it's a, Game of Thrones the set is so unique and it's such a special experience. And I mean, every single job is different as well. But uh, yeah, definitely playing Queen of Naboo was one of the most exciting sets I'd ever been on. I was really early on in my career and it was the first time I'd been on a big studio set with green screens and it was really interesting to sit in the makeup room and watch people go in one door as human beings and then come out another door as aliens three hours later. <laughs> Did you actually realize at that time that you were being part of something so iconic? Does that cross your mind all the time or are you just there to do your job? I think, I mean, I was, I remember it was, I had a, funny um, 
story where I had, uh, George Lucas had seen a film that I'd done and he called and asked, you know, he said he was a big fan of the film and he asked if I, I would come and, you know, play this part in episode three and uh, I was 13 and I just wanted to go to school and I said to him, ah, oh, let me think about it, but I've got some school tests coming up, so if I do do it, can we do it in the school holidays? And, I mean, you know, that was the beauty of, like, not understanding <laughs> yeah. the industry but when you're really young. I would never, ever say that now. Now I'm like, oh, George, please call me. But <laughs> well, I'm sure that George didn't expect that answer. No, I, don't, I really don't. But he was really gracious, and I did get to shoot in the school holidays. <laughs> Tom, and for you? Well, for me, I mean, Game of Thrones has been my only fantasy uh, production so far and doesn't really compare it with any of the other sets. So by far... Um, this was uh, the most exciting set in terms of uh, set design and all the stuff they're building, the costumes. Um, the other stuff that I, that I played in was mainly drama, contemporary stuff. It's not um, that bad. You say it like it's a drama, like it's a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing. It's just drama. <laughs> Thank you. Can we have the next question, please? Hi, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, what was the hardest thing about uh, filming Game of Thrones, aside the rope, yeah? Uh, logistically, it's such a huge production to get your head around, in terms of the amount of people involved. I've never worked on anything of the scale. You know, there's, there are, you know, usually you have like one crew and you have a pretty, you know, solid idea of when you'll be shooting and it's ne never anything as long as this. They shoot over a six month period and lots of different locations with two or three different crews. Um, and so if anything, that was the hardest thing. So scheduling wise, you know, sometimes, so some of the fight scenes in season seven, instead of shooting them over one period of time, we shot them over three months, but only like one week and then two days and then three days, which is hard because you have to remember just small parts of the choreography. Uh, so that was, that, was, that was a little tricky. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a similar thing. I mean, because it's such a huge production. Um, I mean, as an actor, you normally have to wait a, a long time. You, you always have time off, you sit on set, you uh, wait for your next scene. But especially on this production, um, Sometimes it takes hours to, to, to light a new scene and to set it up and uh, you have to be very patient. And uh, also, um, I had one scene, I think it was in season six, when Aya and the Wave had their first uh, stick fight and they rehearsed it, they, they choreographed it, everything. And all I had to do in the scene was just walk in the door, have a look, turn around, walk off. And we were supposed to do it um, on one day, and then the director wasn't really happy with the shots, and he decided, oh no, we're gonna finish the scene tomorrow. So on the second day, he decided, ah, it's not a good day today, we're shooting it tomorrow. So we ended up um, shooting that scene on four days, so I was standing there walking in the door, just looking for and backing out for four days. Oh my so, God. Um, <laughs> I have um, had more interesting ways of spending uh, four days. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do while waiting? What did you do while you were waiting? Nothing. Oh my God. Pl pl playing games on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can we have the next question, please? Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, what's your impression of uh, Bulgarian? What are the things that uh, you enjoyed the most? Of uh, Bulgarian, sorry? Uh, what are the things uh, that uh, you enjoyed the most in Bulgaria and uh, what's your impression of the country? What's your impression of the country and what do you find most interesting in Bulgaria? Well, what, should I go first? Yes, you're the experienced um, one. <laughs> <laughs> what I always like to do when I go to a new country is, uh, and I have some time, I just rent a car and I drive around. And obviously this weekend I, c I couldn't do it because I'm only here for the weekend. But the first time I was here was filming for six weeks. It was an American uh, TV movie. And I had 
a few days off in between, so I rented the car. I was I drove around everywhere. I went to the Black Sea and to Blovdiv and to the Rila Monastery and. Uh, And um, yeah, what was the, the, the hardest word was Koprivtica, uh, Koprivtica. Um, so I've been there and uh, what amazes me and it, what's really cool is it's such a diverse uh, country with mountains, seaside and a, a lot of the nature is uh, really untouched and that's what I love because that's when you come from Western Europe, you don't have it there anymore. Uh, so this is a, I think this is a big treasure and the food's amazing, and I could go on and on about Chopska salad and whatever, and it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can we compare it to New Zealand at all? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, a, it's interesting. I mean, there's, especially, I've only been to Sofia here this weekend for the first time, but, you know, with the mountains, it's really similar landscape to a lot of New Zealand. Um, it's nice to be in a place... You know, I live in America now, so it's nice to be in a place where the air is fresh and it's similar to home. And then I've had, uh, everyone's been so wonderful and so hospitable and so kind and, you know, willing to, like, show us around. And, you know, and it's, it's really nice to be in a place where people love their home. Um, and the food has been wonderful. I've eaten a lot of food. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great. Thank you. Can we have the next question, please? Hello, I have a question for Tom, and it's about the Hall of Faces. Was it like more green screen, or was there a lot of props involved in it, the making of it? What do you mean green screen? I mean, I took all the faces and put them there. <laughs> um, no, actually, um, I, I was really impressed because when I read the script, I thought there's going to be a lot of green screen, but they actually built this thing. And the only green screen we had was at the ceiling, so the height was uh, doubled afterwards. But all the faces that you see, they're actually there. And um, the funny story is, because if, if you look closely sometimes, um, it's like the faces of the producers, it's the faces of uh, people like set designers, whoever had time during the shoot had to go into makeup and, and have their face imprint taken. So. Um, Everybody of production is actually up there in, in the Hall of Faces. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is towards both of you. So if you could choose your own death, what would it be like and why? If we could choose what? Your own death. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I always, um, I, had, I had actually pitched my death well before I knew it was coming to David and Dan uh, because it's inevitable that you, you know, everyone's going to have a death in the show at some point. And I, would, I, thought, I thought it would be somewhat comical to see Obara who's like, you know, she's so serious and she's so like dead set about fighting all the time. You know, she sleeps at night with her armor on, with her spear in hand, you know, she's like... She's dreaming of killing people. I thought it would be funny if she like ate something bad and got food poisoning and like went out, went out in, in her sleep. I guess they didn't take that. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, it didn't go that way and she got the gory death that you know, was very well deserved for Obara, but. Yeah, uh, I never really thought about that because um, it's gonna be really hard to kill Jack and Hagar. Um, even if you killed that guy, somebody else could come along and take that face, and then it would be me again. So um, <laughs> it's uh, we don't. Yeah. He so comes you will stay until disguises. the end. Spoiler alert! You will stay until the end. <laughs> Next Thank question, you. please. Thank you. Vala Morgulis. Vala Dohairis, my friend. A girl has a question for a man. A girl may ask. Will you take me as your apprentice? Well, does a girl know uh, what being an apprentice involves? A girl knows and a girl is ready. Is a girl sure? A girl is sure. 
There are no stairs, my girl, but ah, you can do it. <laughs> a, man, a man doesn't know if a girl knows that being an apprentice involves a good spanking once in a while. <laughs> But, um, <clears throat> perfect costume. Vala <laughs> Morgulis. <laughs> Never seen myself. <laughs> wow, <laughs> in a female form. Uh, can we have the next question, please? So, I have a question, the same question for both of you. Uh, what was the most? Uh, the, uh, what was the scene that challenged you most as an actor? None, obviously, with uh, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not at all. Yeah. Challenging. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> like, uh, you know, there, I did find I did find a lot of um, the. How do I word this? I did find like a lot of the scenes challenging because you don't necessarily have a lot of time. And even though, you know, the scale of the show is so huge, there's so many storylines to follow. And so when you read a script, you know, like you get through it as quickly as possible because you want to know what's happening. And then you kind of break it down and realize that in order to tell your story and your character, you have three or four scenes within that script. And that can be difficult to kind of map out, to not have the luxury of more time. And it's still television, so you can't have these long, breathy pauses that actors like to leave a lot of the time. So uh, that, that, was somewhat, that was somewhat challenging, for sure, to try and convey things in a shorter amount of time. Yeah, I think, I mean, with me, it's a really stupid one. Um, I don't have much action, you know? I'm just standing there, I'm, I'm talking, and nothing happens. Um, somebody else does my killings for me. So what I found the hardest is uh, at the end of season five, when I uh, poison myself, and then I drop dead, um, I actually, the producers asked me to lie there with my eyes open, and staring at the ceiling and not breathing and not blinking. <laughs> and um, I think we shot that 10 times or so because uh, they rolled the camera and at a certain point after three seconds, I was going, you mustn't blink, you mustn't blink. <laughs> blink. <laughs> That's it. So um, yeah, that probably was the hardest. Thank you, next please. Hello. First of all, Dom, I want to ask you, will we see you in season eight? And if yes, will you participate in the fight with the White Walkers? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, maybe you can call the producers and ask them. <laughs> because I seriously don't know. I mean, the, the fans always assume that we know more than they do which isn't the case. The producers are very clever. They're not telling us anything, so we are not in any danger of telling spoilers. So I, I, I don't know. So when did you Thanks. know you were gonna, your character was gonna die? How long before? Really not long before at all, actually. I mean, they uh, started shooting, and they've definitely, um, you know, that's, it's very true. I mean, I came into the show, you know, later and I definitely knew more about the show when I was a viewer than I do now being a part of the show. <laughs> like, they really do, it's amazing how secretive it becomes. <laughs> Thank you, can we have the next please? Hi, uh, I have two questions for both of you. Sorry, can we keep it to one question because we have a really it's long very line. Fast. Uh, first is for Game of Thrones, which is your favorite character? 
And we all heard that you like Bulgaria, but what you didn't like here? <clears throat> what we didn't like? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strange questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's begin with the character. <laughs> uh, my favorite character is Arya Stark and has <laughs> been from the start. Well, she was well trained. So. Well, I, I, I like the bad guys for some reason, so I would go with Joffrey and Ramsay Bolton. <laughs> and if I'm back on season eight, I intend to bring them back to life. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Hi. My question is, um, which is your favorite memory from the set of Game of Thrones? My favorite memory is definitely my first day because nothing will beat that feeling. I was so excited to be there. You know, I was like a, a little, you know, kid who had won the golden ticket to the chocolate factory. It was, it, you know, you arrive on set of the show and you have these amazing costumes and this location and, yeah, I really couldn't believe it. So nothing beats that feeling for sure. Yeah, it'd be the same with me because, I mean, you normally... Uh, you don't have, uh, uh, in a production like this, the sets are perfect. You just, you put on a costume, you're in this set and it feels like you're in a different world. You, I mean, the, you don't have to do much acting. It's, um, it all comes natural and it, 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 it feels really cool. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, my question is for Tom. Uh, hello, no one. Uh, we all saw uh, how powerful Jack and Hagar really is and I really wanted to ask you how does it feel to get beaten by a little girl, Arya? <laughs> what do you mean exactly? Well, did you watch the series? Yeah, I did. <laughs> and she left Bravos and she became no one and still she is Arya. For the time being. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, if anyone sees this, if you're recording this, I have no idea what's going to happen. But, um, well, she didn't beat me. I trained her. I mean, it was clearly my intention uh, to do something with her. If I, if I would have wanted her to stay at the House of Black and White, um, why would I pick her in the beginning somewhere in, Bra in, in Westeros uh, uh, and train her? I clearly trained her to become good and uh, have something to do with the... Uh, the final, the final fight in, in Westeros. And if you watch uh, closely, you could see me smile at the end. Uh, that scene that was just shown. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next, please. Hello. Um, my question is, which character from the show describes you the most in real life? Which character from the show describes me? Yeah. Both Best of you. Both of you. in real life. Yes. I would go with um, Podrick Payne because I'm. <laughs> He's, he has the most fun. You are like Podrick Payne in real life. I hope so. <laughs> so. It just like gets through life, no worries at all. It's all. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe one of the dragons. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Next, please. Hi. Uh, firstly, uh, let me thank you for being here today. And secondly, my question is rather directed to Kesha. Um, I'd like to know how do you feel about the sand snakes being downplayed in season seven? Because they're still a big deal in the book. And we haven't heard pretty much anything about, um, you know, Doran. Oh, oh, he's been killed, but still, uh, we know nothing about Doran, what's going on there. So how did you feel about the sand snakes being killed off like that? I mean, it's always, you know, it's always, I think, for every single person on the show, it's always the fear every time you get a script of whether you make it to the end or not. So, of course, uh, it was, you know, it was definitely, like, sad to know that they were coming to an end, but we were promised a very uh, intense death, which we were given, for sure. Uh, I had such a wonderful time, like playing Obara Sand and also, you know, working with Jessica and Rosie, who play, you know, my sisters were, you know, immediately we fell into a very 
very much a sibling dynamic, which was interesting. We come from completely different parts of the world. You know, I'm from New Zealand, Jess is from England, and Rosie's from Italy, and so it was very funny. It, st it sounds like the start of a joke, you know. <laughs> was, yes. But, you know, we immediately, and so uh, I'm, I'm just really grateful that, you know, we got to play these characters, and we got, and I got to be from Dawn, which is my personal favorite. You know, it's, right. it's the best place to be from, for sure. When we first turned up, uh, the, you know, the, all the guys, who had, all the actors who had been at the wall, you know, they've been like working in the rain and the cold for four seasons. And we turned up and we were like, oh, you know, it's nice to meet you. We're going to go shoot in Seville in the summer. They were like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Thanks. Next, please. Hi. Uh, my question is directed at Tom. You know, when you're going on with your life, you know, in real life, just doing your groceries and everything, how often do you get addressed in a faceless man manner? You know, oh, no, no man would like to know if you what, would like to pay by card or cash, you know. And has it gotten uh, annoying at any point? Often. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, it happens. Um, I've met a lot of girls without names um, <laughs> in, in, in recent years. And yeah, people come up to me all the time and uh, Vala Mergul is this, Vala Mergul is that. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's, I, I, it's a compliment and I don't get annoyed by it, you know? I mean, it's very, honestly, Never. I mean, for an actor, it's, it, it's a great gift to be on a show like that and uh, to play a part that the fans like. So I don't know if I'll ever experience it again with, a, with any <laughs> other part, so it's... Um, so you just cherish it. Yeah. Okay, thanks yeah. a lot. The question is that ever since Game of Thrones is such a big uh, production and everything, uh, do you think you'll be able to escape typecasting in further uh, movies or shows? What about typecasting? Do you think you'll be able to escape typecasting in further shows or movies? Uh, no. I think from now on all of my parts will have long hair and uh, weird dresses. <laughs> yeah, and I'm only going to play a crazy killer with a spear from now on. <laughs> hey, that's not that bad. It's not that bad at all, no. <laughs> well, hope, hopefully not. I mean, hopefully producers will be able to get some other ideas and... Um, you know, I mean, as a German actor, I'm already happy. If you want to work in international productions, most of the time you have to put on a Nazi uniform. So I'm, I was already happy I got this for a change. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next, thank you. Next question, please. What was the hardest part about dealing with yourselves? What was uh, like the hardest thing in developing your characters? What was the hardest thing about developing, developing the characters? The character. Yeah. In developing. Uh, I, one of the things that was really important for me was making sure that the unit of myself and my sisters stayed like a strong unit, and I think we really wanted to have three female roles on screen that we had like a sibling dynamic, but we worked together and we were not working against each other at any point. And so that was something that we worked really hard on making sure that it came across that we were always a strong, that we had each other's backs, you know, and that it, was, it never became kind of us against each other. Well, for me, I'd probably say, uh, because of this weird way of uh, speaking in the third person, when I first got the audition, I thought, my God, I mean, nobody's going to understand what I really want to say. Um, and so I thought, well, the easiest or the best way to do this is to keep it as simple as possible and uh, kind of uh, try and say everything like in a very quiet and... Um, kind of menacing, friendly kind of way, so to make the lines understood. Because if you start and, uh, and act a lot with this, then uh, you, you, you can't get the message across. So the, I think the speech pattern for me was um, the most tricky thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Hi. Hi, Tom. Hello. For me, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for coming. I have uh, 
question for you. What is your favorite movie? What movies you like to watch? What is my favorite movie? Uh, well, I have many favorite movies, but one, f one movie that uh, stuck with me for a very long time, um, and I probably some of you will know it, uh, is um, Arizona Dream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah, you yeah. all know it. Um, because at the time I thought it was, it was so, uh, so imaginative and it was told on so many different levels. It, it was quite unusual uh, for the time. I think it was early 90s. And um, I really liked all of the performances. And I mean, Emir uh, Kusturica uh, is, anyways, he's one of my, my favorite directors. Thank you. And Next, my please. My second question Do you like anime? Sorry, can we keep it to one question? Sorry, we have a really long line. Next, please. Uh, yeah, so my question is for Tom. Uh, there are um, fan theories where they say that you are Sirio Pharrell, the guy who, throughout, who taught Saria, Aria Swords fighting in season one. What do you think about it? Is it true or not? Uh, well, I was always um, uh, debating whether that could be true or not. But then I did a convention in Germany a few weeks ago, and Sirio Pharrell was there. So. That was the moment when I knew we were two different people. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next, please. Greetings. Um, I have a question for Keisha. Um, how do, exactly do you feel about the death of the sand snakes? Since I know they had a great battle at the ship with Euron, but in the books, they are described as very skillful assassin, working their way out with poison and do you think that they deserved more of an action before they actually did? I think they would have liked more, for sure. Uh, however, I don't think they were ready. I mean, you know, before that they were, they were just on the boat in the hammocks, having a good time drinking, uh, and Euron Greyjoy is not to be messed with, you know? So um, I don't think it was a matter of their lack of skill. I just think that they were, you know, they were blindsided by him for sure, you know, and he's... When he decides that he wants to kill someone, we're discovering that there's no stopping him. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi, Tom, Kisha. My question is, uh, who, who, <clears throat> who do you think is the funniest from the cast? Who, the funniest? The funniest yes. from the cast. Uh, everyone's... Uh, as. Like the ca a character that's funny? Or no, actor? The actor. It's a very serious show. There's no, there are no <laughs> fun, I mean. Um. Actually, yeah, I mean, you know what? Like, it's actually really, for the most part, I mean, a lot of the cast, you know, we don't get to work together because we all have our own storylines. And so, you know, like we often, like Tom and I just met for the first time this weekend. And, you know, but um, everyone is really friendly and actually like a really good laugh. But we only really ever get together, get to get together at, you know, things like this. And so we're all out of character and away from it. But no one's really that, like, serious. Isn't it true <laughs> that the, most, the more serious the show, the more fun you have outside of filming? Yeah, like, everyone is quite silly. <laughs> but for the most part, most actors are. You have to be. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm mainly with Maisie, so I'm, I never meet any of the other guys, so I don't know if they're funny. <laughs> Thank you. Next, please. Hello. My question is for both of you. You have been all over the world uh, shooting scenes. Uh, what's the most uh, amazing place you've been while shooting? Uh, we got to shoot um, the Alcazar Gardens in Seville, in Spain, which was really amazing. and. The, they had tried to shoot there, I think, in like season one or two, um, and they never, like, it's totally impossible to shut those gardens down, you know, like it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And um, funnily enough, things that happened with this show, it got really successful, and then we were able, by season five, we were given a week to shoot there. So, I mean, that was really, like, such a privilege, you know, to be there every day. I mean, it's incomparable to anything I've ever done before. Well, 
Uh, at first, I was a bit disappointed because most of my scenes are inside, and all the inside scenes are shot at the studio in Belfast. Um, but then, because we're always filming October, November, December, um, I ended up being quite happy about that because the other guys that were filming on location in Northern Ireland, uh, it rains every single day. It is cold and miserable, even in August and September. And I was really happy to be in the warm studio. So that was my most exciting location. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, uh, I have a question for Keisha. How did you find out that your character is being killed off? Uh, I actually, um, Jessica Hennick, who um, plays Nymeria, told me before I was meant to know because I was on holiday avoiding the phone call. Oh no. Uh, but, you know, and so David and Dan, uh, they do make a phone call you know, to every actor, and it's kind of like the dreaded call before the script goes out to let you know that it's happening. And uh, I had heard from her that she'd had the phone call, and then I conveniently kind of stayed away from my phone and just waited to see how long it would take. And I think I managed to get three and a half weeks from when she was called to when they finally called me. But, it, um, yeah, uh, so, th I mean, that was, that was how I found out. Guys, we Thank only you. have time for one more question, so this will be the last question. Vala Morgulis. Vala uh, My question is for both of you. Uh, what advice would you give to any aspiring new actor? What advice to whom? To any aspiring new actors would you give? <laughs> Go. Tricky. Well, um, <laughs> Uh, to be honest, well, uh, it, the first thing that you have to be clear about uh, with yourself is that it's definitely a marathon and not a sprint mm -hmm. to have an acting career. Uh, you need to be incredibly lucky at certain moments, which is just pure chance. And um, yeah, you need to work and uh, no job is too small, and um, no job is not important. I mean, you can learn something from, from, from every job that you take. I mean, personally, I started out doing uh, theater for kids, so for, for three, four years after I went to drama school, and then it slowly, slowly progressed um, to film and television, but there isn't the one way um, that you can go with it's it's different for everyone yeah for sure i mean it's yeah it is tricky because it is very different you know but um and you I started think, yeah, very early yeah if, yeah exactly and so i think yeah one of the i mean one of the most important piece of it pieces of advice i was given you know i, I started when i was 10 years old and uh I was mentored by like a lot of really incredible actors who have had long careers in New Zealand and uh, all of them said the same thing was that to make sure that this was exactly what I wanted to do and to go and try as many other jobs as possible until this was the job that was left because uh, it's a lot of hard work and it's, you know, it's long and there's, you know, lots of ebbs and flows. It's a very, I mean, any, any career and any type of creative field as an artist, you know, there's feast and famine and there's times when you have amazing, incredible opportunity, opportunities like this and you get lucky and you have a, you know, and then there's other times when there's not a lot of work and that um, you mustn't ever take that personally. And also I think one of the best things is to never take, you know, you should always take the work seriously, but you should never take yourself too seriously. You know, I always have to remember that no matter what, the reason I love this is because it's fun and because I get to go and have these experiences and essentially I get to dress up for a living. Uh, and so if it ever starts to feel too serious, then like that's a day that I should go and get a serious growing up job. Thank you guys, that was really inspirational. We'll give it up for Keisha Castle Thank Houston. Thank you very much. Alpha. Thank you. Blog <laughs> Thank
Thank you.